I recently shared a video detailing my autofocus setup and kind of the functions that I use for wedding and event photography, specifically for the a7 IV. Um, with that video, I received a lot of comments and questions asking for more detailed examples about the functions and the settings, specifically how to access them in the menu. Um, I'll try to give as much detail as I can in this video. Um, some of the other questions that I received were specifically about uh, using the AF with shutter and the back button controls together and whether or not the AF with shutter overrides or um, or maybe cancels out the back button controls, which is it doesn't. It does not. Um, I'll give some examples with that as well. Uh, another big question that I received was about how to switch choose which eye the camera focuses on, which is a, a very important, I'm sorry I left that out, but um, I personally assigned that to the, oops, ooh, the, uh, this button right here, the lens button, which is known as the focus hold button. Uh, if you have a lens that does not have that button, you'll have to assign that function, which is called right, left, eye select. You'll have to assign that to another button, uh, maybe like the record movie button, which I assigned to uh, silent mode, silent shooting, whatever. Um, another big question was about the registered focus area, which is a, a very big deal. And there are some caveats about that, but there's also some very powerful functions that I would love to demonstrate. Um, and you may prefer using uh, some of those functions versus the back button tracking. Um, of course, some of the other questions were about the difference between face and eye priority versus eye only. Uh, and also some of the specific uh, reasons you would use uh, eye only versus face eye priority. Um, and also some of the settings that affect how they perform. So um, I'm going to put the camera on a tripod hook it up to the Ninja. So when you do that, it becomes very challenging to kind of do these demonstrations because you lose some of the functionality, specifically the touch functions. I can't demonstrate any of the touch focus, touch tracking, touch area. I can't demonstrate any of that with the Ninja V hooked up. So everything will be about buttons and how, and I'll try to detail each button I'm pressing as I show you. Um, so that's it. So let's check that out. All right. So here we are in the a seven four in stills mode. Um, I'm going to give a very basic example of my most basic autofocus options. So my most basic is just my flexible spot. And I just use that by half pressing the shutter and you can see the little face detection here that's popping up. And as I move the box away, the face detection turns gray. That's because it's not, even though it's detecting it, it's not going to, to focus on it. I can move this and focus on something else. And if I want to return this to the middle of the frame, I just center press the joystick, move it here and it detects the eye, but it could detect the wrong eye. And if it did, I would press the right left eye select button. So if I wanted to focus on the right eye, I would select right eye, press it to select the left eye and it's going to select the left eye until I release. And then it's going to just go back to detection because I'm using the face eye detection. If I don't want it to detect any face and just use it as just a normal spot, I would turn off face eye priority in AF. Turn that off and it will just act as just a regular focus box, no matter where. And you'll see that face detection box is gone. It's not going to detect an eye, nothing's going to happen. And if I switch to my registered focus area, which you can see flashing in the background there, it's just going to act just like normal zone. And I'll switch back and I'll show you the registered focus area in a second. So I select my, I assign my registered or my focus area selections to my C1. And that might be the default um, 
Now I could have sworn. So you can see I only have these three options. And that's because I have, I have removed them. The other options. I've removed the other options. And the way you do this is by something called AF limit. If you go into your menu and go to oops, autofocus, focus area, you see this focus area limit. So I've removed basically all of the tracking options and I've also removed my wide and center fix. I use the, the only ones I use are the zone, the flexible spots, and sometimes the expand spot. So that's how you do that. Now, the focus zone or the uh, registered focus zone, which is that zone flashing in the background, I have assigned to my center button. And let's just go in here and look at this. If you go to your setup menu, operation customize, your stills custom key dial select, you can see I have IAF assigned to my AEL button. That's one of my back button functions. Tracking on plus AF on to my AF on button, another one of my back button functions. Uh, I have the auto white balance lock toggle right now, but I could assign that to anything. My menu and my white balance are my other kind of functions on the back of the camera. If I go to these, the D-pad, uh, you can see my joystick just returns the um, focus box to the center. That's what focus standard means. Uh, I toggle my registered AF area with my center button. Uh, this is crop mode, full frame selection, my peaking and my zebra. And then my top buttons are, you know, switching silent mode and my focus area, which I believe is the de default. I believe that one's default. And my lens button, I use the switch right left eye. And then of course my exposure adjustments are just pretty much the default, except I s assign the ISO to the wheel. So that also can be done. I think, I, I'm not sure, somewhere else that's, you, you can make that change as well. But anyway, about the registered focus area, let me switch to the registered focus area. Now, because I have the um, face eye priority off, it's just acting like normal zone. But when I turn the face eye priority back on, it will then detect the eye and have that face detection. Now with the registered focus area, you cannot move the registered focus area. If you do, let's see what happens here. You can see that the registered focus area is now blinking in the background again. That's because it has switched back to my standard focus area and has replaced my flexible spot with zone. I of course can move that zone around, but what's the point? supposed to be a flexible spot. So you can't move your registered focus area. There is something else you can do with your registered focus area, but you can't move it. Um, and I will show you some other things you can do. Now, how to set up the registered focus area. Let's go in back into the menu and we'll go back to the autofocus menu, back to focus area, and you'll see this AF register area registration on. First thing I'm gonna do is delete the registered focus area. I really don't have to, but I'm going to. And now, and now my registered focus area is gone. It's just not there flashing in the background. Um, I'm going to turn AF area registration off just to demonstrate kind of the dialogue that it gives you when you turn it on. So if I go into my menu, turn on AF area registration, it'll give me this message. You can register a focus area by long pressing the function button in the shooting screen. The registered focus area can be recalled with the custom key. I of course assign mine to the center button. So now when I go here, whatever I want my registered focus area to be, um, I, I can just hold my function button. So if I wanted it to be my flexible spot, small, all the way in the bottom left corner, I could do that. And I can just hold it. And that now is my registered focus area. So now if I switched back to, say if I want it to be medium, and now you'll see that registered focus area is flashing down in the corner down there. And just pressing the center button, we'll switch over to that. 
Makes really no sense to do that though, because we want it to be something of value, something useful. So I'm going to, to delete that registered focus area, and now it's gone. So I can go back, and now I can switch my autofocus to something more useful, like the zone, of course. And then I will hold down my function button, and it will tell me I've registered the focus area. So now I'm in registered focus area, and I'll switch back to my flexible spot small. And you'll see my zone focusing in the background or flashing in the background. Um, so that's how you do the registered focus area. That's how you set it up. That's how you use it. Don't move it once you switch to it. Only toggle back and forth. You can only move your standard focus area. Um, so there is something more you can do with your registered focus area, and I'll, I'll demonstrate that in a second. So let's look at the back button controls. I'll show you I have the back button controls are my IAF and my tracking on plus AF on. And let's show the tracking on plus AF on. Now when I hit my back AF button, it goes to tracking. You can see it has um, switch to tracking wide. It has used my base box to kind of detect. And now I can move my camera all over the place. If it was, if I wanted to recompose an image, that's pretty much how I would do it. It's so much easier than just um, moving the focus box around and then pressing it. Now when I let go, it'll go back to my standard focus area. And instead of just, you know, instead of moving this all the way over here, and trying to focus, I would just simply use back button tracking and then recompose the image. So much faster. And of course you can use that just to track any moving object. It doesn't have to be a person. It can be anything. The other back button function I have is IAF. So this is only IAF. This doesn't have face detection or, you know, it's not priority. It only works if it detects an eye. So if I move this over here and press it, it still detects an eye. If I turn off face eye priority, where my half press shutter and my registered focus area will not detect any eyes, also, the tracking will not detect any eyes. It just puts up just a focus tracking box. Um, it doesn't detect the eye because those all use face eye priority. If I use my IAF, it does detect the eye. And of just like the, the tracking, you can, of course, recompose your image when using IAF. This is, a, this is probably the setup you would use for like street photography or something like that where there's people in the scene, but they aren't necessarily the subject of the scene, but sometimes you may want them to be the subject of the scene. So you would use your standard AF areas for the majority of your shooting and only use your IAF as needed. So I'm gonna turn all this back on and I'm gonna show you one more thing that you can do with the registered focus area, which is a very powerful thing. So instead of if back button tracking is not your thing, instead of using tracking on plus AF on, you can use registered AF area plus AF on. This is really cool. So now I don't necessarily have to switch between my, um, my standard AF area and my registered AF area. I can just hit my back button AF on button and now it uses my registered focus area. And when I let go, it goes back to my standard area. This, I could see people making, a. I, I could use this a lot. This is really nice, actually. So you can move this around. You can be focusing over here on something. And then when you wanted to focus on, use your, look how, look how convenient that is. That's really nice. Um, I'm going to set it back to my tracking. Um, and... So some of the settings for the actual uh, focus performance. So 
when you get into, there's really only one in stills, there's really only one. And when you go to your focus, well, there's a couple. You have your priority set in AFC. I really don't use AFS. And by default, they're both set to balanced emphasis. Um, you could set it to release, and that would just pretty much always just take a picture, whether it's in focus or not in focus, kind of. Um, I mostly set, leave the set to balanced emphasis, but if there were kind of fast moving subjects, you may want to set it to release. Um, one of the things about autofocus and the way the system works is anything moving is perceived as change. So you, you kind of have to make sure the camera is keeping up with all these changes that are taking place. And one of the things if you're using, if you have fast moving subjects or the scene is constantly changing, you may want to set your autofocus tracking sensitivity to responsive. I use it anywhere between two and five. Any of these I found have given me a great success. They pretty much are excellent. Um, if things are moving a lot, if things are faster, you certainly want it to be more responsive in that regard. Um, I usually leave it to balance emphasis, but if I was doing like wildlife fast action photography, if I was photographing uh, uh, a dog agility or something like that, where the, the subjects are always just moving fast, I may set this to release and probably set the tracking sensitivity to five. Um, I don't know that there's really more to cover as far as the AF. I can't really think of many, but if there's any other things I could look through, if you wanna kind of look at these settings again here, these are my customizations. Now you have different customizations. So there's one more thing I guess I can show, which is the function menu customizations. One of the, I would say maybe the most important thing about the Sony system is you have to customize the camera to suit your needs. If you're just using, trying to use it out of the box, it's going to be very limited. I like to put my drive mode in my function menu to free up a button on the back of my camera. This matches the way my A1 is set up because the A1 doesn't have um, a, a button for your drive mode because that's on a separate pancake dial on the top of the camera. On the a7 IV, it, by default, it's the left button on your kind of wheel D-pad thing. I take it out of there so that I can put my uh, crop mode select on that just like it is on my A1 so that my, my cameras match. Um, and then I, I move this into the, um, I move it into the, the function menu. So um, the other thing I do is put the creative look in there. I like to sometimes switch to black and white so I can shoot and preview the black and white. Of course, my interval shooting for doing time lapses, the variable shutter, which is very important if you're going to be using silent shooting, electronic shutter, my subject selection, um, of course, the face eye priority, the stabilization, focus mode, which I rarely ever change, but if I ever needed to, it's right there. Record media settings. I believe this is the default place for this, and it's very important because I always am changing that. Metering mode, and then my peak levels. My peak level, my, my peak level, and my zebra level. Now, I'm not going to cover the video, but this is very important to have these options. The way I think about it is I put my most important options on buttons, and my next most important options I put in my function menu, and then any other options I will put into my My menu, which one of the most important, of course, is the format. Um, another thing about the function menu is when you put things in the function menu, you can just use your front dial or your back wheel to make the changes without actually having to push the button and go into the actual menu. Let's turn this on. So if I wanted to change the subject, I could just roll the wheel and it would make the changes. And if, you know, you wanted to change your drive mode, you can just roll this. 
You can go bracket, single bracket, all these different single shooting, continuous high. So very important. So hopefully you found that information useful. One thing I want to emphasize is that the AF with shutter does not override or cancel out any of the optional focus options. As long as you're holding down whichever button you've assigned to one of the optional focus options, um, until you let go of that button, the AF with shutter will not change it. So if you're holding down, if you have the back AF on button assigned to tracking, um, as long as you're holding that down, half pressing the shutter will not change that. I personally do not turn off the AF with shutter. I can't honestly cannot find any reason to turn off the AF with shutter. I want all the options available to me. I like to have my standard focus areas on the half press shutter and I like to have my optional focus areas like tracking IAF on the back buttons. So uh, while all these options are spe not specific to the a7 IV, it's basically the same on the A1. The only other camera that is similar to this would be the A7C. But that also has a different menu system, but it does have a lot of the same functions. So if you have any questions about any of the specific features or functions or settings or how to find them in the menu, please leave a comment, message me, and I'll see you in the next video.